The history of the European Union is one of borders. In the first half of the 20th century, two wars were fought to change them. The question switched to being one of what can cross them. Flows of goods and people across the borders would replace marching armies. But the European Union created another border, an external one. On top of leaving an individual country, one was also leaving the European Union. Without being a country, the external EU border has become more important than national borders. While EU members' borders dictate rules, they no longer decide who gets to come in. But now the borders are taking a different meaning. Resource exploitation and competition in the Mediterranean, Brexit, the migration crisis, and the COVID-19 pandemic are redefining Europe's borders. For most of its existence, the EU has been a growing organization. Its borders were defined by its members and associates, and in opposition to the other side of Europe, the communist bloc. As a result, the natural border for the European Union was the Iron Curtain, and the countries that had pledged neutrality in the Cold War. The border, the ideological split between the East and the definition of Europe, was clear, but all that changed with the fall of communism. Countries that were on the other side of the divide were now candidates for the European Union, and the frontier was ready to be pushed back. The eastern expansions took place. Countries joined the EU, but the continent lost the idea of where its borders stopped. Instead, the EU surrounded itself in a sphere of influence of neighbors, candidate countries, and partnerships. But this model of a progressive border around the European Union is quickly becoming obsolete. The migration crisis, which is a result of climate change-induced conflicts in sub-Saharan Africa and the destabilization of the Middle East with civil wars in Syria and Libya, have pushed migrants towards Europe. They are headed mostly to northern European countries, particularly Germany and Sweden. But because of the way the European asylum laws currently work, most of the pressure for dealing with migration falls on the south of the continent. When a migrant comes to Europe, the country that registers him is responsible for processing any asylum claims and for keeping the migrant on its territory. The migrant gets a stamp. If the migrant goes to another country, he will be deported back to his first point of entry. This culminated in 2015 when the number of migrants reached a peak. Countries started building fences to stop the flow. And in an unprecedented move, some of the fences were between EU members. Hungary built a fence at its border with Croatia, a fellow EU member, to stop the flow of migrants. Discussion on migration issues have since floundered over disagreement on asylum policy. This has left Southern Europe, where all the migrants' routes go through, to bear the brunt of the migration crisis. The EU has struck uneasy deals with Morocco, Libya, and Turkey to help control the flow of migrants seeking passage to the EU in exchange for payment. Turkey has regularly threatened to open its borders and drop a human bomb of nearly 4 million refugees trying to make their way to Europe as part of a bargaining tactic. The European Migration Pact, which was supposed to settle the question of migration, was rejected by mainly Eastern European countries over resettlement quotas which would have seen migrants distributed across Europe and arrive in their countries. But one area of consensus has emerged, the need to strengthen the EU's external borders. Ideas that were once those of the far right for dealing with immigration have entered the mainstream in Western Europe, making the continent more opposed to immigration. Frontex, the European Union's border control agency, is seeing a significant expansion, despite an ongoing scandal over human rights abuses, for illegally kicking out migrants without processing. Its forces set to grow from a couple hundred in 2019 to 10,000 in 2027. The presence of a European border guard has two purposes. They serve to support countries in their duties, but because they are such a small force, compared to individual countries' border guards, they also serve to make a show of force, demonstrating to Europe's neighbors that member states' borders are its own. When the European Union was last threatened by Turkey in 2020 over oil resources in the coast of Greece and Cyprus, Frontex border guards were deployed, showing the EU's support to Greece. The discovery of significant oil reserves in the Mediterranean has led Turkey to claim what is internationally recognized as Greek and Cypriot territorial waters. The EU's muffled response about imposing sanctions on Turkey over the intrusion reveals the divisions with how to approach the country. But the existence of small sanctions show the EU's support for Greece and Cyprus's claim, as well as their willingness to at least take a stand on the EU's borders. Further to the north, the European Union is being shunned by Russia. Vladimir Putin is unhappy about the EU's reaction to the Navalny affair, intervention in Ukraine and Belarus, and continued involvement with NATO. The relationship between the EU and Russia has reached a new low when the EU's chief of diplomacy last made a visit to the country, where he was snubbed.
We proceed from the assumption that the EU, at this stage, is an unreliable partner. In a humiliating move, European diplomats were expelled during a press conference, and the EU was labelled an unreliable partner. Despite calls for rapprochement by Western Europe, particularly France and Germany, it is the Baltic countries and Poland's hawkish view of Russia that is being adopted. Calls for the EU to stop appeasing Russia are spreading, and the EU's border to the east is hardening. The unreliability of the United States under Donald Trump has put the European notion of strategic autonomy at the center of European foreign policy. While there is no clear definition of what it means, it is an acceptance that the European Union needs to have a degree of independence from the rest of the world. Countries like France and Germany understand it to be the development of Europe's capabilities, not to be reliant on the United States. Eastern Europe sees it as embodying independence from Russia. The result is likely to be a balance of both, while diversifying partnerships. While the EU signed a joint investment deal in China in 2020, the failure of supply chains in the early phases of the pandemic saw a shortage of medical equipment. Under strategic autonomy, calls have multiplied to see Europe become self-sufficient in the production of vital goods. The pandemic is also creating a new notion that Europe is separate from the rest of the world. European countries opted to close their borders to the outside world, but not to each other, sealing the continent off from the rest of the world. The COVID-19 crisis has effectively created an us versus them notion within the European Union and its border countries. But this has also brought out the worst in Europe, as it tried to make up for its shortfalls in securing vaccines. The European Commission implemented export bans to international outrage, because the EU produces the most of the world's vaccines. The Commission quickly backtracked and apologized. The control of the borders and what gets produced within the continent comes as the EU adopts a more protectionist approach. The way Brexit is continuing to develop is a testament to Europe's hardening border, the refusal to grant equivalency for Britain's financial services, and continued tension over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Britain, which could be one of Europe's closest partners, enjoys a rocky relationship instead as the European Union turns inwards. Europe's tightening of its borders is unlikely to go away anytime soon. Two-thirds of Europeans are in favor of more control of the external border, and new regulation around the European Green Deal promises to shut out goods which don't meet the EU's environmental standards, such as the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, which have been accused of being protectionist. The result may yet be a Europe more sure of itself, but more close to the world. This was Into Europe. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest updates and analysis on European news.